All right, all right, all right. Hey, it's your favorite political innovator, David Washington. That's right, your favorite. And you know it. Embrace it, love it, be it. Hey, so the vice presidential debate occurred a couple of days ago. Not too impressed. Wasn't really expecting anything. Um, was hoping to get a little bit more details on more of the issues that are facing Americans. However, that's okay. It's done. The debate season's over. Thank goodness. And um, this has been quite the election cycle. And I say that because, I mean, first of all, you know, uh, President Biden, the chosen one for the Democrats up until recently, um, was the nominee and now he's not. Um Vice President Kamala Harris uh, became the nominee with pretty much no vetting. But that's okay. However, we are where we are right now, so let's move on. What I'm looking at right now with less than, I say, 40 days, we're just, we're close to about maybe 31, 32 days out from the election. And um, I'm going to put on my consulting hat right now. If campaigns don't have it together, <laughs> I will actually, if they hadn't had it together a couple of you know months ago, uh, then they're going to struggle. They're going to stumble into election day. Uh, again, uh, part of the secret sauce is if candidates do not know that they have a clear indication of winning the Saturday before election day, then you made the whole process difficult for yourself. I tell my clients, hey, if I cannot tell you based on statistical data, historical data, that you're not winning by the Saturday before Election Day, then we did something wrong. We did not follow the strategy. Uh, there was some kind of confusion. Um, things did not go the way they were supposed to go. But before we even get to that Saturday, I would have already told my clients, hey, we're moving in the wrong direction. And if you would like to continue in that direction, my recommendation is that we part ways. I've done that before. And I've seen candidates, I've seen campaigns struggle, and I've seen them lose. People are asking me, um, who should I vote for here in Florida? Who am I voting for here in Florida? We've got constitutional amendments uh, that will affect the state. There are about six of them. Uh, we have um, charter review. I'm sorry, not charter review. We have Orange County charter amendments, um, about eight of them or 12 or 10 or something like that. We've got a lot of amendments to look at um, for Orange County. Florida. And uh, people are asking me, what does this all mean? There really hasn't been any type of uh, marketing of these amendments, whether it's at the state level or at the county level. The, the, the vast majority of them, and there are exceptions, of course, at the Florida level, we have Amendment 3, which is about marijuana. And then we're also talking about Amendment 4, which is for uh, abortion um, of a fetus up to viability. So those are like the ones that are getting a lot of attention statewide. However, at the county level, and again, Local politics really, really, really matter the most than national politics. When you look at it, it has, and I say that because it has the most effect. Local elections have the most effect on our daily lives. And so you want to be very much aware of what these amendments are saying and how they affect your life, your kitchen table issues. There are voter guides out there telling you this is where they stand and this is, you know, their particular position on um, that specific amendment. Um, that's a good start. 
you know, some of these voter guides will just kind of say, you know, vote yes here, vote no here or whatever. My recommendation, again, take the time to do your own damn research. And again, that, that means, you know, take the voter guy, of course, but ask, you know, someone of authority or do your own research. We do have the internet. You have a supercomputer in your hand and do your homework and find out for yourself that this amendment, whether at the state level, but particularly at the county level, if you live in Orange County, Florida, this charter amendment, ugh, I'm with it or ugh, I'm not with it. Do your homework and find out what's going on, what decisions are being made by your community in regards to the future of your of uh, of your of your uh, county. On that note, what do I do as a consultant, as a campaign manager in the last 30 days of election? First of all, that weekend before the election, I take it easy. <laughs> Honestly, I really do. Because by, again, that last weekend in the election, in the election cycle, before the election, every strategy that I've implemented should have been ex executed to its fullest degree and things should be working according to the project plan that we created for that particular campaign. Everyone has their role. Everyone has their responsibilities. Everyone has their task. Everyone has their goals. And everyone has their individual timeline, which coordinates with the overall project plan's timeline. Again, if you're not organizing your campaign in this manner, you're making a great deal of heartache for yourself. Honestly, you are. It's, 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 it's a struggle. It's hard running a campaign. It's hard campaign for office. And that's why we take the approach of campaigns, political campaigns, as creating startup businesses. It's a science. Why reinvent the wheel? You should know every day what your obligations are. Whatever role you play in the campaign, you should know what your obligations are and how to execute those responsibilities and reach your goals and be on your timeline, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, so it's, you know, it's about 30 days left and I'm looking at some of these campaigns and I'm like shaking my head like, good Lord. This is, this is the opportunity for voters to, to contact those individuals who are running for office in their specific communities and ask those kitchen table questions that matter the most to you. This is the opportunity to do that. My vote by mail ballot will be in my mailbox today. Thank you, uh, United States Postal Service, for your informed delivery um, process. Um, I'm looking forward to filling it out. Um, <laughs> I typically will hold on to it until election day and walking in and get a new ballot and fill it out. Typically it'll take me like two seconds. Okay. Two minutes. Um, but uh, surprisingly, I am seeing very little, very little campaign activity across my community. And that's, that's kind of scary. Are candidates taking us for granted? Are the political parties taking us for granted? I can tell you who's not taking us for granted. That's your political innovators here at JM Washington. It's been quite the election cycle. I appreciate all the candidates who have contacted me, all the individuals who have wanted some insight into running effective campaigns. Of course, not all of you followed that advice and you failed. You failed. Uh, some of you have followed the advice, uh, followed the strategies, and have won your campaigns. Or unfortunately, you've lost your campaigns. 
for one reason or another. And then for those of you who move on to the general election, um, let's hope that what you have decided to do will bring you victory. We're rooting for you. But again, if you don't follow the strategy, you're more likely not to win. So anyway, hey, and 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 you're likely to spend a lot of money not winning. So that that's another thing. We do things efficiently. We won campaigns with a lot less money than our competitors. Just follow the damn strategy. Do your own damn research. All right. We'll talk to you. So please, again, like, share, all that stuff. We really appreciate you all, you know, just riding with us, just being with us and being a part of what we do and how we do it. Uh, we are your political innovators and we appreciate you being a, a member of our community, our growing community. We really appreciate that. Way beyond our social media, way beyond our YouTube channels, way beyond the folks who tune into our podcast, our newsletter, our blog, the folks that we also interact in the community with. We really appreciate it. And we will see you the next time. This is the David Washington Show. Did I say that before? I, I hope I did. I, I, I hope. I'm David Washington. This is David Washington Show. Tune in for some more. Please comment. That's it. Yes, please comment. I love to hear what you have to say. Um, I'm having a, a, a great dialogue uh, with uh, members of our YouTube community who are responding to the video, the, the podcast about uh, the NAACP's poll stating that one in four Black men are supporting Donald J. Trump. And uh, the conversation is quite lively. And, um, you know, I, I'm not necessarily a, a Donald Trump supporter. However, I can understand the rationale of those individual Black men who are considering voting for Donald Trump. And here's another thing. My people, my Black people, we don't vote. I, I did some analysis. We don't vote the way we should. We are barely meeting 55% of eligible voters. If you take, for instance, 2016, oh man, I got to do another podcast about this. Black folks don't vote. So I will do a, a, another podcast about the, the data that I researched while listening to the vice presidential debate blew me away. We got some work to do, folks. We'll see you the next time. This is The David Washington Show. We're out.